Hello, true duelists. My name's Craig Fee, and welcome to the end of, like, the longest format we've had since we had six-month formats and clear communication from Konami. That's right, after seeing Lithium 2300's tweet that he was, in fact, losing his mind, Konami finally decided to wait three hours to post the ban list that we've all been waiting for. Did it save the format? Is the game playable? Will it address the many glaring issues with the game, not into and including the fact that there's no communication and prizing's kind of weak and the community's losing their fucking mind and posting vomiting horses and every other thing in the game that's wrong? Almost certainly not, because this is about as close to a live reaction in a pre-recorded video as I'm capable of giving you. But I can see the first four cards in front of me starting off with the good old fashioned American style banning of these pieces of shit. I'll be getting the gun out again shortly enough, don't worry. But in the meantime, four bans from Konami, three of which we saw coming. That's right, Konami has sought to ban Beatrice, Appaloosa, and the King Calamity of the Red Dragon Archfiend variety. Now on each of these, nothing spectacularly surprising. Appaloosa's been on the bullet list since it got reprinted in Rarity Collection 2, slash it's been a problem for deck building and card games and all that jazz for quite some time, and Beatrice has been waiting to be banned since it had the same effect of Laval Ball Chain, that is, sending anything from the deck to the graveyard. That's not a big shock. The only shock is that they decided to put that effect for everyone immediately the turn you summon it properly, but if you summon it in its native deck, then you have to wait. That's just because Konami hates Burning Abyss players. And King Calamity can suck my left one. I don't need to talk about why this piece of shit is banned. But it's Fiendsmith's Lacrima. Lacrima? Purple Man here, that is somewhat of a surprise because it means they're at least somewhat willing to address the Fiendsmith problem. Now, Fiendsmith doesn't have its lovely time abuse for just burning 1200 for the glorious right of having played the game, but hey, I guess there's... Pff. <laughs> it's something, and it's something that most of us can at least get behind. And now I get to look at the limited section for the first time and see what the fuck is up. Oh boy, a limit to Ava, Ash, and Poplar right off the bat, which is cool because everyone loves playing against Drytron and everyone's more eager for them to have more negates. Does this realistically matter? No, Drytron's incredibly two card combo dependent and you can bring it back to full power with negligible impact on the metagame, but that's against the current metagame. So do we really want to elevate everything to Snake Eye format that we've been bitching about? I don't know, but Ava's back. Ash and Poplar going to one, makes sense because they should be at one if not banned if the ba banned we saw from the limit one festival and master duel that this is almost entirely meaningless so the fact that snake eye isn't more hit than this right now is deeply upsetting to me and i'm sure a number of players also limited includes the gimmick puppet of strings both the regular and c variety because konami has seen fit to do this to any sort of you know FTK shenanigans like they fucking should. There's also the unsurprising limit to Sangin summoning because Tenpai can't be left unchecked. And speaking of leaving things unchecked in the gap of power following Snake Eye is of course the Ubel deck, which has been hit by limiting opening of the Spirit Gates, which is I guess a good thing? Question mark? You can still search it with Dark Beckoning Beast, but shut up. We have to hope and cope that this ban list is enough, because if not, it's vomiting horses until we die. Branded Fusion and Pot of Prosperity just means we're slowly becoming Master Duel in real life, although realistically it's because Branded Fusion is incredibly strong and powerful and meriting of a limit in the broad sense anyways, and Pot of Prosperity adds so much goddamn consistency that they had to hit it or they were personally upset that I have bought a number of playsets and thought we need to triple his number of playsets by making it limited. Because it's still a good card to play if it's a one of and you just happen to see it and get to your cards and if not, well then fuck you, it's, it, the duel's going however it's gonna go anyways. Skill Drain going to one of course is cool and a thumbs up maneuver and that grass looks greener, which if I'm not mistaken, people were buying for like 30 bucks a pop. And also, I don't believe it's had a reprint. I think it's only had one printing in the Maximum Crisis, was it? Whom, whom that 2017. So whoever bought those like 12 play sets or four play sets at uh, 20 or 30 bucks, you were smart and everyone else can be dumb. Is one grass going to meaningfully impact any decks? Probably not. Tier limits still fully hit. And what are you gonna play? 
Paleo, 60 card Paleo. Are you really, are we, are we that desperate for it to be 2017? The current format says, yes, we are. So that's, that's cool too. And that's all there is for limited. So now we get to look at the semi limits and take a look at what it is they've thought could meaningfully come off of the list. And look at that, none of the semi-limits are particularly important either. All four Dragon Rulers come back into the game at two now, continuing to do nothing like they've done in Master Duel at three, but now we can do nothing with them at two. That's fascinating and interesting and irrelevant. Luna Light Tiger coming up to two is neat for those four people who will not shut the fuck up about Luna Light decks, and Thunder Dragon Colossus, while still fine, deeply upsets me. Not because I think it's going to impact the game in any meaningful sense, Hell, I am a big fan of the card aesthetically and like playing Thunder Dragons. It's just not the type of card I want in the game. But my opinions are as irrelevant as the horse posting about the ban list because this is what we have, folks, and it's here to stay. Also, just this year, the world just this year, Ib Synchro is at two, and nobody ever played it at two anyway, so just bring it to three and get it over with. And then there's the unlimits, the things that Konami has deemed welcome back into the game at three with no problem whatsoever. Many of the cards that have gotten erratas that are functionally fine at three anyways, things like Ancient Fairy Dragon, or the newly eroded and back at three plush fire because it now has a hard once per turn it should have had in 2015, but who really gives a shit? There's also the Unlimit of Armageddon Knight that is of no shock after it was recently brought up to two. Deng Long joins Ancient Fairy Dragon at three because again, if you can play it at one, you're, you're already doing everything you're gonna be doing with it. Red Rose Dragon comes off of the list after the adventure pile mutt decks that people called base that still doesn't really have a name. Anyways, you've mostly forgotten about it by will or desire to have forgotten about it, so it's back at three, and, and Dragon Link players can try and do something with that now, maybe. Who fucking knows? Magispector Kieran also joins the world at three. Realistically fine as well. It's not like Magispector's doing anything, and Pendulum Mutt Piles are still lacking any sort of viability whatsoever, so have fun with that as well. And then the last thing is fucking Time Seal, which I feel vindicated because in the grand collection of cards that I grabbed to talk about, to preemptively have this video as ready to go as I could, I threw Time Seal in there, because I'm like, yeah, they could move that thing with zero fucking issue, and they have. It's at three and will continue to be fine. Again, it's a thing where I might say, it's, I don't like it in the game anyways. I recognize it's doing nothing, but when you get into the situations where it can do something, it just fucking sucks. But Konami and the world at large have clearly decided to simply get good and not let yourself fall into that situation. And frankly, if I'm unable to do that, I deserve to lose anyway. So who gives a shit? And so that's the entirety of the ban list, which leaves you wondering, has the format been saved? The answer is no, not really, at least in my assumption. Snake Eye decks are weaker, and there are hits to things like Ubel and Tenpai and Gimmick Puppet FDKs that need it to happen. However, a number of cards that people want gone from the game by and large are still here. Things like Gimmick Puppet Nightmare or Sanctifier, because if you get rid of Nightmare Puppet, they'll just throw in Raw's Disciple or some other bullshit anyways that will functionally be the same thing. So you'd think maybe get rid of the actual meaningful problem card. And then you'll hear comments of, well, they limited Brandon Fusion, it's fine. And it's like, I don't care if they limited Brandon Fusion or Branded Fusion, I want it fucking dead. I don't want to lose to the fucking gimmick puppet again. Is that such an insane goddamned take to just remove the one bullshit card that's ruining my dueling experiences against Branded? And apparently the answer is yes. Clearly, because it's still in the fucking game. Not to mention things like Dimension Shifter, although we can get the praise Xenu limiting of skill drain to one, it does leave something to be desired. But more than that, on the macro scale, this ban list doesn't really reinvent the format, nor does it especially feel like an insane ban list, like the January 2020 ban list, or the September 2013 ban list, or the November 2015 ban list. Ban lists that have historically gutted the format to allow the game to meaningfully change, which might have been appreciated when you take into account the fact that people are still pissed about things like prize support, the lack of communication, that horse that's still fucking vomiting, and a number of other issues in the game at large. I don't think this has saved the game, but at the very least, it does make it marginally more playable. I am thankful for that alone. And hey, they said 
the 31st and we got it on the 31st, just three hours late. So cool, thank you to that Konami. I only sat at this desk for three hours waiting for you to post the ban list as you told me about charmers and then neglected to inform me of anything. That was a thumbs up maneuver and everyone was happy and cool about it. Overall, I think it could have been better, but it's at least a goddamned ban list, so hey. A, li a little less snake eye, just a tiny itty bitty bit. You'll still get cross outed, it'll still be bullshit, they'll still open the dark beckoning beast to search the limited spirit gate anyways, but it's okay guys, the gimmick puppet FTK is much weaker. So the game is saved, everyone can be happy now, and I can't wait to see an unending plethora of horses continue to vomit on Konami's social media. Or maybe I'm wrong and it actually does solve a lot of things, I don't fucking know, I'm not using like Joshua Schmidt, you think I know what the fuck I'm talking about? I'm in here in a suit. I have a phone I've been looking at. I got Oak here just because I was like, well, what if they hit Oak? Well, should that be in there? And it's like, well, clearly, no, they shouldn't hit Oak. They should hit Flamebird, <laughs> whatever, whatever. There's still another format to come. It'll be different. And then another ban list will come. And maybe then we'll see unending vomiting horses because that my friends is the state of Yu-Gi-Oh today and that's all I meaningfully have to say and it rhymes so it's true go ahead and let me know what type of cards you wanted to see hit on the list or what changes came on the list that you enjoyed I for one am looking forward to the future format and will still be posting updates on the regular it's, uh, hit subscribe and impress your smoking Italian wife become a true duelist and let's see exactly what it takes to be demonetized on YouTube Till next time, I'm Craig Fee. Thanks for watching, enjoy the format, and don't you worry, folks. Greg is still here.